Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, depending what time zone you're located in. For some of y'all that got good friends over in Europe, good evening. My name is James Kowser. I'm the training manager for Army Reserve Family Programs. I'd like to thank you to Family Program Shop Talk. We get together and bring you different agencies and services that help to enhance the quality of life for the family members and soldiers up within the Army Reserve. But before I get started, on behalf of Mr. Mufu Taiwo, the Acting Director of Army Reserve Family Programs, and Mr. John McCarthy, the Senior Volunteer, Senior Spouse for the Army Reserve, I would like to wish you happy holidays and hope you enjoy this holiday season. But before we get started, as we all know the holiday season, you get a lot of spending and stuff going, but in order to do that money spent, first, we have Ms. Stephanie Murphy here today to help us with that. From hiring our heroes. Ms. Murphy, the next show floor is all yours. All right. Thank you so much. And very happy to be here with you today. Um, as I said, I'm Stephanie Murphy. I'm the deputy director for our fellowship programs here at Hiring Our Heroes. Also a military spouse of 25 years and now a military mom. I um, want to thank you guys for inviting us to come in and tell you about our programs and what we do for military families. Um, so thanks for the soldiers, volunteers, family members that are out there and Mr. Kuzar for having us. Um, so let's get started. Hiring Our Heroes is part of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. We're the nonprofit and the foundation arm, and all we do is help the military community connect to employers. Next slide. So we started back in 2011, and back then when transitioning service members were getting out of the military, unemployment was over 20% for them. The unemployment was being paid by the DOD and the operational budget of where that service member left. So as you can imagine, that was not good enough. And so fast forward to today, we do skill bridge opportunities that started back then. We are just one of many skill bridge opportunities out there for service members, um, but now we do a lot of other pathways for the whole military community with digital events, hiring events, upskilling opportunities, and then our fellowships that I'll definitely jump into. Next slide. All right, I'm gonna throw a lot of information at you of what we do. Some of it may be a direct interest. Some of it may just be information for you to pass along to your families. But if you don't remember it, even though he's recording, our website has everything on there. Feel free to check it out, see what we have going on. But first off, we do a lot of hiring events throughout the year. Um, whether this is gonna be um, connecting with our career connectors, when you register for a hiring event, they're gonna be the first point of context that's going to help you realize which area you need to move to in our programs. For example, making sure that a transitioning service member is ready for a fellowship, meaning they have to be in that last six months of active duty. Maybe it's a military spouse that's looking for employment and they want to make sure they're going to be career ready. So they help fit you into the pathway that we offer, help give you some of the resources that you may need and identify what you can work on to be career ready. Also, we have career summits throughout the world. We've had 37 this year. We plan on having 52 next year. These are on base events and installations with all branches across the country and overseas. It primarily is for the job seekers of active duty service members and military spouses. Um, but we also have virtual hiring fairs. This is something positive that came out of COVID. We curated a lot of um, information on our website to help individuals get ready for jobs, interviewing tips, LinkedIn tips that then went into virtual hiring events. Some of them are going to be industry focused. Some of them are going to be, um, you know, targeting the exact type of employment that that job seeker is looking for. Um, but they are run with our partner Brazen on a virtual hiring platform that is very user, user friendly. So you can see some of our stats here at the bottom from the virtual and in person from last year. We're almost at the end of 23. Can't believe it's almost over. And we'll be updating that for our content that we've done this year. All right, next slide. 
OK, so what makes us different here at Hiring Our Heroes? Um, it's how we go about cultivating the talent. I mentioned the career connector. So we have a huge team of individuals that helps a candidate at that first entry into Hiring Our Heroes. Helps give them sometimes direct referrals to hot jobs that we know um, companies and our partners are hiring for immediately. Sometimes it's just holding on to them until they're in their time frame if they're transitioning out of the service, or sometimes it's referring them to one of our programs. If they're a military spouse, maybe it's had a career gap, maybe it's re-entering the workforce after a time period of raising children and you know moving around with their service member, and they would do one of the military spouse programs that we have set up for them. Next slide. So the career connectors, they are the backbone, as I mentioned, of what we do for your first entry in. And this is for um, transitioning service members, veterans, military spouses, and caregivers. We recognize caregivers as anyone taking care of an injured service member. So we definitely um, move them into the fold of our military talent. So this could be from the screening, to the custom queries that you may be looking for in a job or a um, host company, referring you to those next steps, hot job newsletters, and then those digital resources I mentioned. Okay, we love our career connectors, so definitely want to talk about them. All right, next slide. All right, then you would be referred to one of our fellows programs which are many pathways that we do for a 12 week think of an internship fellowship with civilian host companies so the first category would be active duty and those are the ones that are transitioning going to do a skill bridge so as long as you have the correct paperwork which we help walk you through that um, we have an MOU with the Department of Defense. We've been doing it for a long time, so we know what you need to have, and you must have command approval. This is an opportunity for you to have your resumes released to host companies to interview for a 12-week internship with that company. We have programs for those that are degreed, and we have programs for those that are non-degreed. Um, and it's equal across all branches and all um, ranks and it's available nationwide and we do have some remote as well. Then we have our industry based internships that is also Skillbridge, but it could be with Google, which is our career forward program. We have a Department of Energy partnership for solar energy and sustainability. And then some of our applied technology, we have a partnership with Salesforce and I'll get into that in a little bit too. And then we have our military spouse and caregiver internships. This is also 12 weeks long. We just received a year ago a pilot program collaboration with the Department of Defense where they are partnering, um, collaborating with us to run the fellowship in conjunction with Deloitte. And it's called the Military Spouse Career Accelerator. Um, so the MSCAP. And what that basically means Military spouses are not paid on active duty pay, right? Whenever those transitioning service members are doing a skill bridge. So you need a stipend. Our host companies can't have free labor. In this pilot, the DOD is paying that stipend. If you're a non-active duty spouse or caregiver, then the stipend is paid through one of our partners. Um, there are some details there on the bottom. You can see the hiring rates around 85 to 90% and then the average salaries in all of those categories. All right, next slide. All right, here you can get an idea of the talent that we have in, that we did in 22. So close to 3000 people went through the programs of our pathways for fellowships. You can see the degree security clearance, the service status, historical results there. And next slide. And then this gives you a snapshot of the fellows. So by gender, branch, we have a great representation of what the actual military rep representation is as well. So Army being the largest branch, we have the most fellows that come from there and goes all the way down. Average salary, degree type, and then it shows you on the map here the reg regional breakdown of the percentage of those that is also represented um, in the military. One point just to realize for those that would be the transitioning service member doing a skill bridge, 
we highly encourage you to apply to the location that you want to reside whenever you transition out of the military. You don't want to do a fellowship if you're stationed in, say, Houston, but you plan on retiring or transitioning and moving back to Michigan. You prefer to look for employers in Michigan to make it worthwhile for you. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that to you. Next slide. OK, um, Stephanie, before you go on, I just wanted to bring to everybody's attention. You know, I don't know what on this slide that one thing jumped out at me that the average salary for those going through your program is almost twice that of the national median. That's a statistic that just jumps out at, I don't know about it else, but it jumps out at me. So that means by going through your, your program, your fellowship program, your fellows program, then who your, your, those, those people who participate and get employed through there, that salary, that's just an average salary. Some can be even higher. Some, yeah, some, a, little bit, some a little bit lower, but but the bottom line in the average salary is almost twice that of the national median. That's that's quite an accomplishment. Over. This is very true, and I will highlight why that is. Um, the host companies that we work for and we provide, you know, the military talent to want this talent. They realize what they offer. They understand how to read their resumes. They know what they can bring to the table. So they want this because those leaving the military have skills that host companies can't teach their current employees, right? So they're resilient. They work through problems. They don't get overstressed. You know, a civilian job, no one's shooting at you. So they have something that they bring to the table. Um, that all of these host companies want. So that is um, definitely a difference, and that is primarily why they pay for that difference too. And a lot of them come with a security clearance. Correct. Absolutely. We do work with a lot that work with, you know, the defense sector. So that, you know, is the same way. All right. Okay, Next I'll slide. let you go ahead. I just, <laughs> that, that just jumped sure. out at me. That's fine. That's a good highlight. Money talks to people. All right, some of those special programs that I mentioned, um, the industry specific. So we have a partnership with Google um, and the program is called Career Forward. This is an opportunity for you to get a certificate and upskilling what you've already done, you know, in your past experiences, maybe in cybersecurity or data analytics, IT support, think help desk administrators, project management. And then this can help set you apart from those that are applying for those same positions. Also, we work with Salesforce. We have a partnership with them for three and a half years running. So if you've ever ordered Starbucks on your phone, called USAA about your policy, they use the Salesforce CRM. It's the number one CRM in the world. 85% of, of uh, Fortune 500 companies use it. Um, so we work very closely with them. They have a program called Salesforce Military where you can go and get your certificates for free and then do a fellowship with us. And then I mentioned the Department of Energy. Um, we have a partnership with them for solar um, veterans and working in sustainability. All right, next slide. Next slide. Thanks. All right. I mentioned sometimes when military spouses are applying, they may need a couple of different resources to help them upskill to be career ready. And here are some of these programs and ways that we try to do that. All right. I think I lost the slides. Um, I have them on my side, so I'll just keep talking while they come back up. Um, one is called Amplify. And Amplify is a two-day career-ready workshop. Some of them are done virtual and some of them are done in person. But we're going to help you with your um, elevator pitch, maybe how to write your resume, your LinkedIn account, how to prepare for that interview and interview prep, how to network, um, and how to go through all of that so that you feel more career-ready. We also have military spouse hiring events virtually and in person. A lot of times at those installation career summits, the day before will be a military spouse hiring event. But how many of those military spouses have ever moved? I know I did 16 times 
and then you get to a new place, you don't have a network, and you're looking for a new position. Well, that's why we created the Military Spouse Professional Network. There are 70 different volunteer-led chapters across the world. So think that you moved to Fort Bliss, Texas. It was the last place my husband did a major command. He was the garrison commander there. I wanted to work. I wanted to figure out what to do. Um, and I connected with the Military Spouse Professional Network there. It's run by volunteers that have already been there in the community for a couple of years. So they're also working with the U.S. Chamber, which is a branch of ours, where we, you know, we're part of the U.S. Chamber. And they have employers that are hiring. So we know here at Hiring Our Heroes that 85% of jobs are done through networking. So we created this networking program for military spouses. So if you are in a location that you're looking for employment or you're getting ready to move to a location, look at our website for the Military Spouse Professional Network in your area so that you can connect with them and get started. All right, next slide. All right, we also help drive change in this space. We do a lot of research and innovation with our partners, um, and we've done things on financial costs, on military spouses not having employment. We just finished one with Indeed on veteran employment, so feel free to check out any of the details of those on our website. Next slide. One of the things that our host companies love besides wanting our talent, but is how we set it up in our database. So they have a dashboard that they log into and they're able to engage in our events, in our programs, but then also with our military talent. So if you can see on the screen for the gentleman that's in the picture, it looks like little baseball cards. This is what candidates look like to the host companies. So they can see, you know, their name, their branch, um, how long they've been in service, Service, what they're looking for in industries, and then their resume. And then they can send in a direct invite to them for an interview when that resume releases out. So how does that process work? So if you're competing for a fellowship, you go out in a resume release with all of those that are competing with you. It goes to all of our host companies nationwide. They then circulate that with their hiring managers down to the location that you're looking for. And then they decide who best represents for the roles that they're hiring for and reach out to you directly for those interviews. It's about a four to six week long process, depending on the time of year that it occurs. And then you go through those interview processes. At the end of the interview window, you log into a portal where you can see all of your fellowship offers. And then you accept the one you want, decline the ones you don't. And then fast forward, you get ready for your first week of the fellowship, which is orientation with us. We want to help you understand how to do the best you can in your fellowship to get that offer at the end, because again, the goal is employment. And then you start with your host company the following week. So week two through week 12, you're with your host company, Monday through Thursday. Fridays you have off, you come back to HOH for some professional development for a couple of hours. But then you have a couple of Fridays off too, and this is really geared to help um, the transitioning service members do their VA appointments. Also, you know, they might be checking out slowly out of their units. And then we progress through the fellowship to at the end, you have an offer in hand. So I think we had that 85 to 90% job offer rate for those individuals um, for their job at the very end. All right, next slide. Another thing that we've been told we do really well and partners keep coming to us to run their fellowships for them is the storytelling. So we try to capture those stories of those that have very unique stories, maybe challenging times, maybe first generation, maybe um, hadn't had an opportunity to work, um, caregivers, whatever it may be in crafting those stories and being able to amplify that message to resonate to those others in the population of military talent that you too could do this um, and try to help make that connection for them. All right, next slide. So the next four slides I must show um, I would be remiss without saying we are a nonprofit and could not do any of this without our partners and our sponsors. 
So we have a Veteran Employment Advisory Council. These first two slides are those sponsors and partners. Next slide. And then our next two slides are going to be for our Military Spouse Employment Advisory Council that help us with those things that we try to do as well. And the last slide showing that. So that's all of my slides, but I am definitely open to answering any questions or explaining anything further that I possibly can. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, Ms. Butler, I see you. I, I can always count on Ms. Butler to raise her hand. Ms. Butler? <laughs> OK, hello, good morning. Um, I wanted to know how long does a fellowship last for the spouse? Like so all of, no, sure, great right <laughs> question. All of our fellowships are 12 weeks long. 12 weeks long, OK. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Now, appreciate that. it might Thanks. be shorter. Ooh. If they get hired before and our military spouses have the option for a direct hire option as well, if it's a great match. So that is definitely an option as well. OK, that sounds great. Thank you. Sure. <clears throat> okay, Miss um, Martin. Oh, yes, God. thank you for taking my question. Um, so if I go to a local chamber in my area, they're going to understand um, when I talk to them about H, H, uh, hiring our heroes. No. So every, no? no? No, unfortunately not. Um, so we are part of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce headquartered in D.C. Believe it or not, all the U.S. chambers across America are not in um, alliance with that. So some may be, some may not be. It just depends on where you are. So if I approach them, just ask them if they're in alliance with um, hiring our heroes or how would I frame that? Maybe let me ask you this. What are you looking for? I'm looking. I'm with a D, in DOD contract um, private public partnership. Uh -huh. So I'm looking for them to, uh, you know, be able to access some of the community employers and also to I mean I, I was on a contract some years ago and worked really closely with hiring our heroes and um, there aren't a whole lot of job fairs in my area on the east coast I am in New England so mm. I've not I've kind of pulled away but was really excited to to be um, part of watching this presentation Sure, no, I tell you what, um, feel free. I'm going to put my email in the chat. Um, feel free to email me and I'll do my best to connect you with someone in the area or at least one of our team members that works for that area and um, see what they can do to help you out. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. OK, Mr. James. Good morning, sir. <clears throat> Good morning, uh, Stephanie. I'm Gerald James with the uh, Private public partnership also with Mary. Good morning, Mary Crockett. Uh, my question is, um, I know we got a, we have a lot of programs for the transitioning service member. What programs um, and opportunities do you have for the currently serving Army Reserve soldier? That was going to be my question. <laughs> so we do not. Um, we only work with active duty service members in their last six months of active duty, meaning they're transitioning and qualify for a skill bridge. Um, if you're in the reserves or National Guard and you are a veteran, you can attend any of our hiring events, any of our virtual events, anything like that. So feel free to look at what we have, you know, that may be in your area or time frame or of interest on our website for you. Right, you said veteran, but, but what about the currently serving Armed Reserve soldier that has the same um, difficulties finding employment like your uh, transitioning service member? Is there any service that you can offer them for as, uh, you know, employment assistance or any other of your programs? If there's anything on our website for them, absolutely. 
Um, as I mentioned, we have a lot of those curated informations about interviewing um, and then any of our hiring events. But for fellowships alone, we do not have fellowships for them now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How about spouses of reserve soldiers? Sure, yeah, they okay. qualify. We um, consider military spouses as anyone that has been impacted by their career because of a service member service. Okay, are there any other questions for Ms. Murphy? I know I know some of some got to be at this doing somewhere. Yeah, and if they think of it later, you know, my email is there. Feel free to reach out and I'll do my best. Again, I, what I'll do, I, I will record, we, we're recording this session, and I will send out a copy of the slide deck along with your contact information to everyone that's on this call, as well as those individuals who were not able to join us at lunchtime today. And so they'll have all this information. That's the pur main purpose for recording these sessions since everyone can't get in here at lunchtime, you know, but they can go back to our YouTube channel and watch it. So at this time, it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, are there any further questions from Ms. Mercy regarding hiring our heroes with their fellows program, fellowship program? You know me, I take silence to be golden. Ms. Murphy, <laughs> thank you. Thank you again for spending your lunch time with us today and providing us this great information. And we will get it out to everyone um, on this call as well as those who will be checking out the YouTube video. No, absolutely. And thanks again for having us to talk about what we do. Happy holidays to everybody and thoughts and prayers with any of those deployed or with deployed service members. But don't go nowhere, everybody. Cause I still got something else for you today. This this came up yesterday, and some great information for you. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, from Lieutenant Colonel Mingledorf, our financial literacy program manager here in Family Programs. Uh, He's gonna talk to you about some stuff he got going on. Colonel Mingledorf, the floor is yours. Very good. Um, let me just share my screen here real quick. Can everyone see that? Very good. OK, so I, I see that. So um, what I wanted to talk about today is just uh, very quick. This is going to take just a, a few moments. Um, it's uh, almost almost a public service announcement just to make sure that that everyone is on the same page here. Um, I am the program manager for the financial literacy department. Uh, my name is uh, Alan Mingledorf. And uh, one of the things that that we need to make sure that we do um, as leaders is get out information that might help the soldiers in general. So I want to make sure you guys are all aware uh, what's out there. And today, the public service announcement is about continuation pay. Um, and you can, I, I don't want to read the slides to you. I'm just going to hit the high points. Uh, but continuation pay is a direct cash payout uh, for our soldiers. It occurs at, at different points in the career. Uh, currently, it's at, at the eight-year mark and it's eligible to be taken anytime from the eight to 12 year mark. Uh, it, is only it is only available for soldiers that are in the blended retirement system. And uh, make sure if, you, uh, if you're a soldier and you're in that window that you know the difference between a blended retirement system and the legacy system. And if you have questions on that, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, you, can, you can email me a question directly. You can talk to your S1 um, or the RSOs or um, uh, somebody. But make sure that if you're in that window, you find that out because this is a fantastic, fantastic bonus. And if you don't apply for it, you don't get it. Uh, like I said, it, 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 it currently is somewhere between the eight and 12 year window. And on the active side, it's a multiplier of two and a half times your monthly, uh, your monthly base pay. If you're on the reserve side, the T TPU side, it's four times your monthly basic pay. So it is a, a, an incredible bonus, especially if you're a, a TPU soldier and you're used to making uh, just your normal drill pay to get a bonus that's worth four times your normal drill pay, we're talking about some um, some pretty big dollars. And I'm gonna go over that in just a second. Um, so again, here is the, for this is for the past five years, this is what the multiplier, this, these are what the multipliers have been. You can see that back in 2018 on the National Guard and Army Reserve side, the bonus was only half a month's pay. Currently, 
it's like I mentioned four times pay and you qualify at, at, at year eight. So just to kind of give you an idea of what those numbers are, this next slide shows that if you're a reserve soldier and you are an E6 with eight years of service, it's a $16,000 bonus, over $16,000 bonus. There are several different ways you can take that. Uh, but uh, if you're a, a captain with eight years of service, it's over $28,000. Now, if you're a, a reservist and you're used to making, you know, $600, $800 a month for your normal drill pay, to get a bonus of $16,000 or $28,000, uh, that's a huge, huge amount. So this is, and, and part of the problem is not enough people know about this. Um, so we want to make sure that every chance we get, we're telling our, our soldiers, um, is, especially those um, who we want to retain, that there are these bonuses out there for you. Um, so I won't take up any more of your time. If there are any questions, please let me know. I'm, I'm here to take questions right now. Um, if it's not a question that you uh, want to ask online uh, or you want to take my contact information and give this to someone that, that you know, feel free to do so. Uh, but I am available to take questions right now as well. Okay, did anyone have any questions for Colonel Mingledor regarding these uh, continuation pay? And I say, y'all know me. I take silence to be gold. And thank you, Colonel Mingledor, for bringing us this information. And uh, I'll be sure to pass it, these slides out when I send out the other slide deck to those individuals who were would not be able to join us, but would be checking out the YouTube channel. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining us today. Um, and on behalf of Mr. Mufu Taiwo, the Acting Director of Army Reserve Family Programs, as well as Mr. John McCarthy, the Senior Volunteer for the Army Reserve Family Programs, uh, I wish, I'd like to wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas, or season's greetings, however you decide to celebrate. And uh, just enjoy and be safe. I look forward to catch you all again the second Thursday of January, right here on Family Program Stop Talk. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Bye bye. Mr. Thanks, James. Mr. Have a good day and weekend. Mr. Bud, you can stop the recording now.